Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power. We're going to talk about changes to the fishing proclamation. We have a new proclamation this year. Greg, probably the most high profile change, I guess, this year deals with aquatic nuisance species, right? Well, there, it's more of the same from last year. Some of this is a carryover from last year. If people recall last, uh, last summer, last fall, we found adult zebra mussels in the Red River. Because of that, we put in place some emergency rules on the Red River, which prohibited uh, uh, the movement of bait water away from the, from the river, as well as pulling your plug. Now in the interim, in the last few months here, over the course of the winter, we, we, our intent or our plan is come April 1st, it will be law statewide on the plug. You will now have to have your plug pulled from your boat uh, as you leave, when you leave, when you're transporting your boat. When you're back home, it's fine, you can have a plug in, but while your boat is in transport, your plug has to be uh, removed and any uh, de water holding devices, valves uh, inside of your bo boat need to be open. Does that mean like live wells? Uh, you say water holding valves. Right. Uh, well, and, and currently, currently the law is you, you can't transport any water anyway. So theoretically, uh, and I, I, not theoretically, I would guess the vast majority of people are already practicing this. They pull their plug, they, ol they drain their bilges, their live wells. If there's a valve inside, some, some have valves, they open the valve to drain all water. They're currently doing this. Right. So now the only change is you need, as you're transporting, you need to keep that plug out or the valve open. Right, and that's the law in Minnesota already, Correct. I know. Well, if, if, uh, if a warden or a law enforcement were to yeah. see you driving down the road, if you drain your boat and then put the plug back in, you could get a yeah, ticket. Yeah, th there's probable cause to pull you over and check you out. And, uh, and not just Minnesota, it's South Dakota. There's a, uh, the majority of the states now are going towards being more conservative, more uh, protective of their resources. All right, you mentioned, Greg, that we do already have zebra mussels in the Red River, so these regulations are meant to keep them from spreading, right? right. Uh, and it's, it's the same theme we've had in the past, is the prevention, exactly. You know, we're taking some rules. By and, by and large, what we're trying to do is make, make everybody aware of the concern or the threat out there and, and practice, you know, safe measures so you can uh, minimize, minimize or reduce the spread of these things. And, in this case, it's going to be a law change, uh, but uh, and and it's important to to reiterate too for those that do fish the Red River because this rule, the emergency rule, went in place uh, last fall. There probably wasn't a lot of fishing going on any longer. That when they leave the Red River, if you're shore fishing in a boat, you've got to drain your water out of your bait bucket, uh, and that's specific only to the Red River. Let's talk about some of the other changes too, Greg. There is a, a really interesting one coming up for ice fishing. Currently, we have free fishing weekend in June. In June. U usually sure. the first weekend in June. Uh, we're going to also have a second weekend in this to capitalize on the, the ice fishing opportunities we have out there. So uh, five other states allow it. We're going to do the same. We'll have that second weekend. And but the thing that's unique with ours is uh, we're going to do it over the holidays. Uh, that weekend, what falls, you know, in and around between Christmas and New Year's. Oh, sure. And this year, or this next winter, it will be New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. But it's the whole, the whole purpose is to, you know, expose everybody to fishing. And a lot of times family and friends come back for the weekend and, hey, let's go tr try this. And I'll give them a, you know, hopefully a thrill and, 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 and get, their, get them excited about fishing. Uh, I should point out that's residents only, though. Uh, just same as the summer, the free fishing weekends are, are for residents only. All right, you're also reducing the possession limit for some panfish. Correct, and currently we have a 10 fish uh, daily crappie limit, that's a little bit different, but the bluegill and perch and white bass are currently 20 fish daily, 80 in possession. Effective April 1st, it's gonna stay 20 daily, but the, the possession limit is gonna be reduced to 40. Uh, and we're doing that for a couple reasons. There, there's been some concern of, of a lot of harvest, a lot of people coming into some of these small lakes, especially in south, central, southeast North Dakota, and maybe taking too many fish, 80 fish people feel is, is, is excessive. Sure. Uh, the other issue though is all, most all of our fish regs uh, by species, whether it's walleye, pike, it doesn't matter. It's double the daily. The possession limit is whatever the daily is, it's twice. So not, at least we're going towards standardization. Here. Just being proactive. And proactive also, yeah. All right. Uh, you changed one of the regulations for dark house spearfishing too, and it's a good rule. 
when you dark house spearfish currently, you need when you're done fishing, you need to mark your hole. You know, it's a safety issue. Right. You need to mark your hole. Uh, the the change is now when you get to the lake and you start spearing, you need to come. You need to have that in your possession. And a lot a, of people, a marker. A marker. And most people right now are using a tree limb, a branch, Probably something that's true. you know that you can see. And they uh, what happens oftentimes is they go up, go out after the fact. They're done. They walk, then they go over the shore and f find something. Well, sometimes maybe they don't find something and then just leave. And it, you know it's a safety concern again. So it's it's another proactive measure. But what we're saying now, effective next winter is that when you get out dark house spearfishing, you, you need to have that branch with you or that lath or whatever you're marking hole with, have it when mm -hmm. you start your, your dark house spearfishing. Any other changes people need to be aware of? Of course, as always, the new fishing st season starts April 1st, so a new license. Uh, the regulations are in the book, and, they're, and, they're, and the regulations are pretty minor, the changes, I should say. Uh, nothing of real significance, but you know, lo look at in the book, we, there's. If you fish Golden Lakes or Red Willow, there's a couple changes there, but they're uh, pretty minor in the scheme of things. And should be a great year. All right, Greg, thanks. You bet. You're going to need a new fishing license on April 1st. The licenses can be purchased using a computer or smartphone and visiting the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. You can also buy a new license at vendors across the state that are linked to the department's online licensing system. Since not all vendors that sold licenses in the past are linked to the system, a list of vendors participating in the electronic licensing sales is available on the website. Licenses can also be purchased by calling the department's instant licensing phone number at 800-406-6409. For Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.